interested in that. And my answer was very simple. I have never met anybody in the whole of my life who isn't interested in what happens when you die. I've never met anybody. I know some are a bit bravado. Oh, I'm not bothered when you've got me gone. Don't even think about it now. I know something like that. But the thing is, everybody, it goes through your mind. What happens when you die? And then people have different answers. And when you listen to those answers, you find out, well, they just say what they'd like would happen. So they're actually saying, yeah, well, this will happen. You know, it's going to be really good, and I'll be with the people who've gone before me, and so on. And if you ask the question, well, how do you know? Well, it just is, isn't it? That's what I believe, and I think that's what will happen. Now, for something as serious as that, because we are all going to die, and you know that when you're very young, but as you get older, it creeps up on you a bit, doesn't it? I remember hearing a story of a funeral in Liverpool, and it were a big family, and there were loads of cars. Can you remember when Earth used to go down? I hope you're enjoying these stories I'm telling, by the way, but it's important, isn't it? Can you remember those big funerals where Earth and then loads and loads of cars following behind it. And when you're a little kid, you're in back, you're in back car, miles away from front. But then as you get older and somebody else dies, you move up a car until finally you're in the car following the earth, a few cars behind you. And you realise, well, I can only go up one car now because next one's earth and that's for me. And so everybody eventually has to die. Now, we all know that, but I'll tell you what, every one of us, we are fantastically skilled at just putting off what's important and thinking, well, you know, not today. I'll think about that if I go and think about it another time. And we can all pull, really put it off. Now, what Jesus says is that he's the light of the world, so he will tell us the truth. What really will happen? What life's all about? He says, I'm the light of the world, and anyone who follows me won't walk in darkness. Now, let's face it. We live in a society, don't we, where who knows what's happening to us as a country, as a world. It seems a madhouse, doesn't it? It just seems incredible. And Jesus says, well, I am a light, so I can shed light on these things. I can tell you that this world didn't come about by accident. But there is a God, he's absolutely real. And this God has made everything, and this God provides everything for you and me so we can live on his earth. Jesus says, I'm the light, and I'm telling you what you need to know. Now that's brilliant, because lots of people say, well, I, I really don't think there is a God. And there was a fellow called G.K. Chesterton. I don't know if you've heard of that name. But he was a famous writer absolutely way back. I think the first time I ever heard of him, actually, was through um, a comedian whose name I can't remember. Somebody's going to tell me. Some, what are comedians? We're always on about G.K. Chesterton. But any road, this is what that famous fella said. He said, when a man stops believing in God, he doesn't then believe in nothing. He believes in anything. That's what he said. And I thought, wow, that's such a good thing to say. Because we live in a society where so many people like to tell us, oh, I don't believe in God. What do you believe then? And of course, there's lots of alternatives. But you hear what they believe in. Like the, worth, the world and the universe came from nothing. Pardon me? The world and the universe came from nothing at all, just appeared by chance. Right, that sounds very interesting. Let's have a think about that. Because if you don't believe in God, you really will end up believing in anything. So Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. This is how it is. This is reality. God is, is real, is made everything. And what's actually gone wrong with this world is that the human beings that he first made, then they rebelled against God. They did so because they weren't happy just being the creatures that God the Creator had made, they wanted to be as God is. Make their own decisions, live their lives, do whatever they wanted to do, make up their own rules. 
Now, it wasn't really meant to be like that. God made us perfect, and he made us without the necessity of having to die. That's what Jesus, the light of the world, reveals to us. That when human beings were first made, then they didn't actually die. You say, well, uh, how can anybody believe anything like that? Well, because Jesus, the light of the world, says that that's true. And if you want to say, well, why believe him? I'd go back every time to the resurrection and say, well, he has earned his place to actually tell us what is what and everything that we need to know because this man died on a cross and three days later was resurrected. The man who came back from the grave says, this world is created by a God who really is and human beings that he made rebel against him. I'm listening to the man who came from back, back from the dead. I'm not interested in somebody who just says, oh well, I, I think this will happen. Or I saw a film once and this happened and that really made me think. I thought, hey, that's really good. I'm not interested in that. I want to know reality and truth. Jesus says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. I am the light of the world. If anybody wants to follow me, you don't have to walk in darkness. You don't have to walk about, spend your life saying, oh, I wonder what it's all about. I wonder what happens when you die. Oh, dear, the world's mad. You don't have to do that. I'll give you light if you follow me, says Jesus. So he tells us why the world's gone wrong. And the world has gone wrong because our heart, that's the center, the inner bit of what you really are. You know, we're more than just a mind, aren't we? We're more than just a body. The real you, you know what I'm talking about. The real you inside, when you're on your own and you know what you're really like, then God says, then it's our hearts that rebel against God. Just like Adam and Eve, the first people that God ever made, not a ridiculous story, just <laughs> really important to us, that they rebelled against God, and since then, every one of us has been able to resist what God says. And so, a few have mentioned it today, Mike mentioned it early on, about how in our hearts, God's estimation is that actually, right at our core, we are not good people. In fact, he says the heart is deceitful. And he's talking about all of us. But the heart is deceitful. And so what's gone wrong with this world is that human beings like me and you, we don't really follow what God says. Do you know he's only ever asked us a couple of things? Two big commandments, Jesus says. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind and might. Love your neighbour in the same way that you love yourself. That's all he's ever asked of us. To love. Amazing, isn't it? God is love, and so it's no surprise that he says, right, this is what's required of you. You are to love God and love everybody else you meet. Now, give us a wave if you've kept those commandments. If you've said, that's me. I've never stopped loving God. I've never stopped loving the commandments. Okay? I won't hold my breath, because the fact of the matter is, of course, nobody. No, nobody at all has ever kept what God has given us to do. What about the Pope? No chance. No chance. What about Mother Teresa? No chance. No, not even Mother Teresa. What about, I know somebody really, really good. No chance. Nobody has lived a life that is absolutely pleasing to God. So what's God's reaction? What's he going to do? He's made people, we've turned around and said, we don't want you. We don't want you to rule over us. We don't want to love God and we don't want to love our neighbour. We want to live for ourselves. What's God going to do? Well, I'll tell you what he does. He loves us as we are, even though we're rebels against him. And he sends his only son and he specifically says that he hasn't come for the righteous, good people. He's come for sinners. So Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And that's the word that is a very helpful word to describe you and me. Well, that's what you are, you know. You're a sinner. Well, fancy him saying that. Well, it's all right. I am an all. 
that's why I'm able to come to you and say I know somebody who can help us because we have fallen short of the glory of God. Now, if you're resisting that, and if you say, I can't do with all this, these fellas say that we're all bad and all the rest of it. Well, I'll tell you what, if you don't think you're bad, just set a day aside, you decide which day it is, and you do everything that you ought to do. Think the right thoughts, say the right words, do the right things, don't do bad things, don't think bad things, don't say bad words. Just one day, one single day, and we can't do it. Because human beings, then we're full of flaws and faults. Now Jesus said, right, I'm coming, but I'm coming for sinful people. That's why people who think the good never benefit at all from Jesus, the light of the world. Because he, he didn't really come for them, did he? Because they say that they're good. But if we know that we have got to meet God, and that's certain. The Bible says it's appointed to us once to die, and after that, the judgment. So actually, every single one of us is going to experience that. There's no ducking and diving and dodging. There's no saying, well, I don't agree with that. You've got to agree with that, surely. We're all going to die, and God says, after that, the judgment. Well, how do we know? Well, the light of the world, Jesus, says, follow me, listen to what I say. You don't have to walk in darkness. You don't have to guess. You don't have to wonder what's going to happen. You don't have to ask what's life all about and don't know. You can look straight directly at the Lord Jesus because that's all we pointed to, you know. We pointed to the person of Jesus Christ and we're urging you, go to him. You read all about him in the scripture and so our message today is not, hey, come and follow us. The message is, follow Jesus. Why? Because he's the light of the world. And he gets rid of the darkness of people saying, I just don't know where to turn, I don't know what to do. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. So he tells us what is real, what is reality. And he tells us that yet yeah, judgment is real and every one of us will be there. You know, if I come up to you in five minutes time and say, well, have a lovely day. And you can enjoy today because you're not going to prison for 20 years. You give me a bit of a funny look, I reckon. Because when we talk about good news and Jesus and the gospel is a message of good news, it's always in a bigger story, isn't it? You can't have good news without it being in a bigger story. It doesn't work, does it? So if you say, oh, I've got some good news for you. Eric's back home. And you say, well, Eric's got back home. How is that great news? That you've got to know that he's been in hospital six months first. And then he's been in hospital, he's back up. That's good news. It's in a bigger story. See what I mean? So if I come up to you and say, have a good day. You're not been to prison for 20 years. You look at me and say, well, well, it's nice to know, like, but I didn't know, I didn't think I would be going to prison for 20 years. But if you tell that to some fella who's been in, on a trail and he's been accused of murdering somebody, so he's facing 20 years in prison, and then the judge says that you are not guilty, and you can say, right, you can go home, enjoy the day, because you're not going to prison for 20 years. That fella will jump up in the air with delight. Wonderful. Because the biggest story he actually thought he would do. You hear what I'm saying? So, Jesus, the light, has this good news, but this good news is set in a bigger story. Are you ready for it? Because here's reality, folks. This is reality. Me and you, yeah, we are going to die. And me and you, yeah, we are going to stand before God on judgment. And me and you, yeah, we are guilty. And me and you are going to face the punishment. Oh, you yes, say, what kind of message is that? It's a tough one, but I'll tell you what, it's reality. And I wouldn't be able to stand here and tell you that if I didn't have the good news in this bigger story. And the good news, Jesus said, right, repent. Believe in me, and everlasting life because I've come to die for sinners. And on the cross, he took the penalty, took the punishment that you and I deserve, 
He rose from the dead to convince us that this is absolutely true and real. He ascended into heaven, that's where he is now, and he said, one day I'm coming back to this world, and I'm coming to judge the world. And that's the end of this world. Jesus said, yeah, the end of the world won't come. It'll coincide with me coming back from heaven. Wow! There's a lot of things there, isn't there? Um, but this is the Bible story. This is light into a dark world. And now, it's up to each one of you, of course. You can reject it, or you can accept it. But it's a wonderful thing that the message this afternoon is because of Jesus, we really do not have to guess anymore about God. But we can be absolutely certain because this man was the man who died and came back to life again. Right, I'm rounded about, as Mike is, as Danny, as Graham, as a number of other people are, all milling about there. And if you want to pick up on all any of these things, please do so. And as I say, if you want to disagree, or you want to ask a few questions, but please, can I ask this? Just don't put it one, to one side, because we pray that this truth will really just come to us. Any one of these Christians, no one was born a Christian, you know, and so each one of these has experienced to our Christians just that truth really coming and the reality of it being made known to us. So that's our prayer for you, and if we can help, that will be grand. Right, continue to have a good day, and be thankful you're not going to prison for 20 years.